Hey guys, this is Pixel Dan here at San Diego Comic Con 2023. I'm at the Mattel booth again. Where, I, where else would I be except for on the Sea Man toys? But I'm here with Josh again. What's going on, Josh? Hey guys. Hey, Dan. Man, I'm excited. You guys just finished the panel, yeah. so I feel like I have so many questions for you. So let's let's talk about the new stuff. Sure. It has revealed a lot of new things here at the show, um, and I think Origins is a really good place to start because we've we've got some new announcements, and I think a lot of people have a lot of questions on like. The direction of the toy line. So when Origins began, it started as like this homage to the vintage Masters of the Universe toy line. Yep. You guys have always done a good job of working in other characters here and there, but the focus always seemed to be on that original toy line. Um, and we've gotten to a point where there's not a lot left in that toy line. That's true. But it sounds like we are moving the toy versions exclusively to Mattel Creations, is that correct? That is correct, yes. Yeah. Starting in 2024, okay. we still want to hold our promise to finish that vintage line for all of the collectors and completionists out there. Uh, and Mattel Creations will be the home of where you can find them. Okay, so I was live streaming the panel when you guys were announcing this. So I'll let you know that the chat, their biggest concern was how hard are these gonna get be to get on yeah. Mattel Creations? Yeah. Like are these, going to be something that sells out real fast? Is it going to be hard for us to buy it? Because I know a lot of us like just pre-order a lot of this stuff through places like Big Bad or any sure. of those online stores. So, I mean, is that, can you speak to like quantities or how? I can't speak to quantities. Okay. I'll get in big trouble. Okay. Um, but I can say that we worked with the Mattel Creations team pretty closely. And so we evaluate what's happened over previous sales, the evolution of their platform. I'll say they are extremely diligent in making sure that they're addressing the needs of all of their fans and all of their customers, uh, especially their international customers as well. And that as we look at how we plan things, that we take into account, um, you know, the the kind of needs and the kind of importance, like finishing the vintage line, sure has. And I would say, in some cases too, if we see extreme response. Like maybe a year ago when we were chatting about some right, of the characters, right? Then Mattel Creations has been great in partnering with us on the brand and creating those additional opportunities for fans okay. to get products. Okay, okay, yeah, I think that's the biggest concern. Is like we've come so far, yeah. we don't want to like miss out on the rest of these figures, right? Yeah, totally. So that's that's definitely something we just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of and. That's awesome to know that you're already thinking about that. So um, is the plan to finish out that vintage toy line entirely? That is the goal. It was our goal from the beginning. Okay. Uh, it remains our goal, what, four years later? Sure. Five years later. Um, so we're holding ourselves accountable to it. Okay. I think, as I mentioned, you saw a lot of great reveals today. Yes. We have more reveals to share as time goes on. Um, so I think you'll be excited about what you see in the rest of 24 and beyond. Good. Okay. Um, but and yeah, beyond. That's, that's I like that. Yeah. I like that. Good. So that also includes like giants and dinosaurs, right? Like it's very important to include giants and dinosaurs. I mean, I can talk about out our vintage giant <laughs> dinosaurs. Um, <laughs> you know, I think part of it too is I look at what we're doing in motherboard in Masterverse for Comic-Con this year. Sure. And it was our first foray in the Masterverse line into looking into kind of this giant scale. Larger figure. scale, okay. Yeah, and I know we've done vehicles and play sets and origins and all that. And, you know, is there an opportunity to bring those larger than life scale creatures and dinosaurs and dragons to the front? Okay, so. okay, well that's good. At least I'm glad to hear you're thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so with these Mattel Creations launches, um, do you like, can you tell us like how often that's going to happen? Is it going to be like a once a month drop or is it, like every couple months? Or... I can't speak for that team. I okay. know they have a very busy schedule sure. across multiple categories. Okay. You know, our brother and sister brands, we lost Monster High and Hot Wheels and all that great stuff. Okay. Um, so I can't speak to it's like a regular cadence or not. Right. I will say what we talked about today, all four of those items are planned just for spring. Okay. So All right. it may be that a couple are closer together than others. Sure. Um, but you're going to be seeing them pretty frequently. Okay. And we want to make sure that as we grow Mattel Creations, we're also growing the opportunities to get that product by giving you a nice cadence of release. Okay. This is starting to give me flashbacks to some of those older collecting days of Masters <laughs> of the Universe here. So, <laughs> so forgive me for having a lot of questions about it. Like, no, obviously, course. there's a lot of... Um, we don't, we don't want to miss out. I think that's the yeah. biggest thing. We don't want to miss out on any figures like like Duplico, right? That's a big sure. one that people still sure. ask me about all the time. Um, do you have any, like, 
Can you shed any light on what's up with Duplico? Yeah. Like, what's going on with his distribution? It's so yeah. weird. So what I hear is there's actually still inventory arriving with Walmart. Okay. So he's continuing to come out with Walmart. Um, so I'd say it's obviously going to vary store by store as we're being visited by it's our a very our loud friends. Star Wars yeah. drivers driving by right now. Yeah. Um, so I'd say that you know it's going to vary store by store, but that inventory is still continuing to come out from them of Duplico okay. later this summer. That's so he, it. Also, he is like a Walmart exclusive, right? Because there was in like the, in the U.S. there was a yeah. batch of them that hit Mattel Creations, which yeah. was kind of a surprise to us. Yeah. And then ever since then, it's like he's kind of at Walmart, but he's kind of not, and he's like yeah. hanging out on the website, but not for sale. It's been very confusing. Yeah. So yeah, and I will say that you know we've certainly heard the fans on this one. We're looking to work with some of those internal teams at Mattel, also retail partners internationally. Okay. In addition to Walmart, see, are there more opportunities for Duplico to come out? Okay. All right. Well, that's good. That's good to hear. So the new reveals then, let's yeah. talk about those a little bit. You guys just revealed, we saw Night Stalker already in there and he's going to be one of the Mattel Creations figures. Yep. We saw Rock On yep. um, and he does fully transform, right? He just does. like the vintage yeah. toy. Fully articulated. Uh, he's still modular. You can take off arms, legs, heads, all great. that stuff. That's great. But you can still convert him into a rock if you want. That's great. Uh, yeah. And with that being built, I would imagine Stone Dark can't be too far behind. So that's pretty great to know. Um, but then you guys also revealed Extendar and Cyclone. Yeah. So we've got some very like action feature heavy characters, um, which is really awesome to see. And one thing I think is awesome is they all retain those action features. Yeah. But you guys still built in like articulation and the modular function, right? Yeah. I mean, total shout out to Sam Pack on our design team. Um, you know, one of the challenges within Origins is... We wanted to create this new standard of articulation, posability, modularity, and all that. But some of these design features in the original toy line, yeah, hard to recreate and still marry those things. And I know in the past, you know, we haven't been able to include features, and we've gotten a lot of pushback from the fans. Let us sure. know about it. Sure. Um, so we are looking at each and every opportunity to include those features as well as maintain that articulation that's so important to us in Origins. That's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah, so like they demonstrated the Cyclone, which was really cool because he does a feature where like you pop the torso up yeah. and that yep. activates like the spinning feature. You can just spin the dial then and it still turns, yeah. but all the parts are still modular, which is awesome. Right? So you could fully disconnect the figure, the torso from the legs, or uh -huh. you just pop them up, you get that spinning feature as well. That's cool. And those are the kinds of little fun things that we're trying to introduce to all of our featured figures that that's are coming out. Amazing, amazing. So with play sets, we know the Snake Mountain's coming. This kind of surprised true. that's not here to see like a final look at Snake Mountain, but that's soon, right? Yeah, that, I would say within the next few months, you'll be Snake seeing Mountain a lot of Snake shown. Mountain. Yep. And then uh, Eternia, any updates on how Eternia is progressing? Yeah, I mean, so I guess the, the easiest answer is we don't have updates because everything is progressing smoothly. Right. Um, so we're still planning for early spring 2024 release. Okay. Um, really nothing has changed in the development schedule there. We're getting those prototypes in, like pre-production samples. Everything looks great. I expect that there will be an update email working with Mattel Creations probably later this fall. Okay. As we start moving forward. But so far, everything seems to be running fine. Good. Great, great. Yeah. So obviously you can't give us like a definitive answer on this, but if we are finishing the toy line, the Fright Zone is an obvious one that people are asking about. And also yeah. the Slime Pit, which and those kind of go together. So is there potential for bigger play sets still to come? Um, maybe through yeah. Mattel Creations? And stuff I would like say that? absolutely. Absolutely? Um, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Okay, <laughs> good, good. All right, so let's talk about the cartoon collection. Sure. Uh, so this is the way where Origins is headed, and this is going to be at retail, correct? Correct, yeah. These, actually, pretty much everything you see in here will be available at mainline retail starting spring 24. Awesome. And so we're, we're, um, all of these are inspired by the original Filmation animated series. We've got a refresh in the packaging, which mm -hmm. reflects that, yep. which is very cool. But you also, like, change the bodies too, right? Correct, yeah. If you look at the original vintage toys from the 80s, and the way you kind of have these big balloon shoulders that are so rounded and they have the squatty body proportions and you look at the original cartoon they're similar but their posture is a little bit different the, sure. the size of different muscles are different so we want to make sure in this new iteration that we were accurately reflecting what you see on content so the figures feel like they're really just popping off the screen 
So you're going to see different head sculpts, different body sculpts. They're going to stand up a little bit straighter. Okay. Just the same way He-Man kind of walks around in the show. Sure. We want to be able to move and, and pose out in that same style. And each of these guys will come with accessories from specific episodes that you okay. can recreate with the product and the packaging, which of course will pay homage to it. And then it will have call-outs in the copy as well of which episode that accessory and that pose is featured from. That's great. And uh, you also mentioned, I think, in the panel that these still retain like that modular play, so they can actually mix and match with the other Origins figures still, correct? Yeah, they are the same five and a half inch scale, the same modularity. So you get that world of play with all the vehicles and the play sets that we've already come out with. We want them to be backwards compatible. Sure. But also allow us to add in new things so you can swap heads and swap arms and swap accessories uh, to really build out the figures that you want. Excellent, excellent. So these first reveals here, they're all very like main characters. Um, is the plan to include some of those filmation exclusive characters as well? I know there's a lot of fan favorites like Shakoti and mm -hmm. Icer who have never really had like vintage scale figures before. Yeah. That would be really cool to see. Yeah, I mean, Koldar comes to mind immediately. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. You guys how did well Koldar. he did. Yeah. And so I think for us on the team, we look at that and we say, why not? Sure. So I say there is a very strong chance that you'll see those characters eventually. I think we want to make sure that we set the stage first with the characters that fans want to see, and then we can start creeping into those, like that. you know, deeper cuts. Now, are we looking into larger things for this line too? Like, obviously, there's some cartoon-specific vehicles. Like, mm -hmm. the filmation attack track is very different from the toy yeah. attack track. Yep. So, are those things you're looking at as well? Yeah, I would say we're exploring the entire world of the content. Okay, good to know. That's good to know. Um, I guess the other thing I need to ask is, are the She-Ra characters on the table for this? Like, the Horde and the Great Rebellion, like, will we see yeah. them in this cartoon line? Were they in a cartoon in the 80s? I mean, they were. Okay. But I know there's always questions about, like, how the rights work for that stuff. That's so, true. Yeah. I would say we are open to ideas okay. and they were in a cartoon in the 80s so okay. i'm not going to rule anything out okay that's good that's good to know that <laughs> awesome all right so i think that wraps up origins which you guys have here you're continuing with masterverse as well we are. and there's a lot of new stuff i mean you have new stuff for the upcoming revolution cartoon which just yep. debuted we saw some new characters Wildor like appearing in an animated series yes. and getting like an animated figure yes is very cool to see um, but I, I know there was a, some questions online too because you've got him out there, but then you also have movie Evil Lynn. Yes, and I think it's important to note that those are like distinct, like they they are absolutely right. I think there's a lot of overlap here. Yeah. Meg Foster being one, obviously, right, right yes. some motherboard, but also that iconic Evil Lynn. And I think the the showrunners we heard from Teddy and Rob and Kevin have done a really nice job of bringing in all those different elements of the franchise sure. into Revelation and now into Revolution. And, you know, for us, it's like, oh, yeah, we get to play with new versions of our favorite characters. Yeah. And Gwildor is such an interesting, fun, weird character yes, from that absolutely. movie. Absolutely. And I'm really excited for you guys to see what he looks like in this new content. Yeah. Um, but I think everyone's going to really enjoy it, yeah. and we're excited to bring him to life. Yeah, in the figure form. Excellent. And uh, I assume this is just the start of, like, Revolution figures, too. There'll be more Correct. for that as yeah. we're getting closer to the release of the show. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so the Meg Foster Evil Inn figure, that's yeah. over there. Like, the movie Evil Inn. That's yeah. really exciting because, like, you know, we, we got the He-Man and the Skeletor, which was awesome. But we've yeah. also had a few of those in the past at the same yeah. scale. Evil Inn has been sorely lacking for a yeah. long time. So she was long overdue. Um, but I'm, I know me and several others are hoping that there's still room for like a few more of those characters down the road. Like I will say Man, there, have been, Arms, there have been conversations okay. about a number of those characters. Yeah, Tila. We'll have to give Courtney Cox a call as oh well. Oh my god, yeah, well, I mean, no, sure. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> but I would say, yeah, it's definitely an area we're exploring. Okay. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens with Evil Inn and maybe that opens the door to additional entrants. Now, you did mention, I think, that she's going to be a retailer exclusive, correct? Correct. So that'd be like one of the retail stores or like an online? I can't reveal yet. You don't know yeah. yet. Okay, gotcha. But yeah. she will be a retailer exclusive. Correct. Um, so then we've also got several reveals for the new Eternia subset, yeah. which has honestly been one of my favorites sure. for Masterverse. Yeah. It's fun to see these guys like 
kind of like reinvent it a little bit, but still look very classic. It's a really great mashup you guys are doing. Thank you. Snout Spout is incredible. <laughs> like, Thank you. I mean, he is the standout for yeah. me. So that is a lot of fun to see some of those characters. Um, any of those you want to talk about specifically, or like? Yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, I remember being in a room with Terry, our designer, sure, Robert Rudman, our copywriter, um, and we were just thinking through, like, well, what if we did this, and what if we did this, and well, what if we did this version of He-Man? But why would we have this version of He-Man? Because it's cool. Yeah, but we need to have an explanation for that. And I remember us just sitting in the room thinking through, like could we bring this to life in a cool way and in a way that allows fans to explore new possibilities with these characters but also honor have their classic looks sure yeah and so as we started to roll these out we've also i would say like let terry do his thing in yeah. a number of ways and he's a brilliant designer and we're so lucky to have him and you know just let his creativity fly and this is the result and you're getting these characters like snouts about like our newly announced Trapjaw, Trap Jaw, which yes. is a work of the heart for him, obviously. Man, yeah, and uh, he was showing that in the panel, but like yeah. just the interchangeability with Trapjaw alone, like you can swap off his normal red jaw, Correct. the claw comes off and can be flipped around and turn into a silver jaw. He's got a sword attachment. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of really cool play features there, yeah. which is really cool, but he still looks like Trapjaw. Yeah. Which I think is such an important like distinction for these characters. Like yeah, they still look like themselves. We we do a lot of characters based on content. And you know, sometimes they are very true to their original version. Sometimes they take a step away to serve the needs of the content. Yeah. And I think what we can do in New Eternia is if that character, you know, in the content isn't reflected in how fans thought of him originally, that we can do a version that also honors that first look. Yes. And absolutely. so I think Trap Jaw is a great example. Absolutely, of that. absolutely. And we can't not talk about the new packaging too. Like yeah. you guys revealed new packaging for Masterverse, which I think is gorgeous because there's a heavy focus on that beautiful artwork. You guys moved it from the back to the front, wraps yeah. around, but there's still a nice window. I love that. I think that is so cool. Yeah, I mean kudos to Roy. He's our packaging designer. Um, his work is incredible. And you can tell that it's Everything he does, he puts his heart and he puts passion into it. And essentially, we looked at what we had been doing for Masterverse when we launched. And we said, let's give him a bigger canvas to work with. Yeah. And he started taking everything that was on back. We thought about how do collectors display these? How do they play with them? How do they open them? Let's put it on front where it can be seen. Yes. We can create a window where... We know people still want to see what the face looks like, see the accessories that come with it. Absolutely. But we want them to be packed out in a way that you can easily access it or put it away. Right. And really, between Roy on the graphic design piece, Lawrence on the packaging structure piece, they have done just phenomenal work. And we couldn't be prouder of what they accomplished with this new Masterverse look. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So I guess this is probably the most important question of the entire day. New Eternium Mosquito or when? <laughs> I know, we're going to have to create a Pixel Dan specific character. You'll get the exclusive first look. Oh, I love it. Yeah, let's. I love, okay, you guys all heard, that. You first, all heard that. You all heard that. I mean, I don't see why not. There right? you go. I like it. Why not? I like it. He needs to be there. He needs yeah. to be there. All right, so the real most important question of the day is Masters of the Universe still have a lot of life left in it? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. We yeah. see, we are planning for, should I say, multiple years of product to come out. Uh, awesome. As long as you guys keep engaging with us, keep supporting the line, we'll keep making the product. I say this every time we talk, we love the feedback, positive and negative. Yes. And it's important for us to hold accountable to what the fans want, what you guys want. Um, but like I said, we have multiple years ahead of us that we're planning for, and we couldn't be more excited for what comes out now. Awesome. Awesome. That's all good to hear. It's all good to hear. Josh, thank you for taking the time to Absolutely. talk to me once again. I always appreciate it. Of course. I know everybody else always appreciates it too. So awesome. Uh, well, there everyone. you guys go. Masters of the Universe from San Diego Comic-Con 2023. <laughs> Stay up to date with Pixel Dan at San Diego Comic-Con 2023. Follow Pixel Dan on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Or you can support the channel through Patreon and unlock other exclusive content. Thanks for tuning in to your premier source for all things toys with Pixel Dan. See you again.